Hey everybody, we're going to go ahead and we're going to review my new repertoire called the Extensive and Detailed Sicilian Repertoire. So we're going to go start off with the basics of it. Um, so it is very night off based, so there are three night off subgroups. There is normal night off lines, which involve classical lines that you'll see, you know, played in like Kasparov, um, Karpov Championships, stuff like that. Uh, you'll see stuff like the English Attack, which is very popular. Um, today, and you will see stuff like the Poison Palm variation. So I set these up into three subgroups because there are lots of cover, and I don't want to put them together in one big chunk. So I put them separately. Um, this one, for example, has a lot of main lines, which basically have stuff like, you know, this also has the Fischer Sozen attack in it, and I think it also has the Amsterdam variation. So I did put a lot of um, lines in here. Um, for example, like, let's say, I don't know, let me, let's say, okay, let's say this one. So let's say there, so this is like the classical one, where they play bishop g5, for example. And, <coughs> basically I keep this, um, you know, I, I like these, I like to put a lot of the different, kind of variations that white could play. So this is one of them, and this is called the classical variation, where they want to basically win your knight by pinning the queen and such, and there are many ways to defend yourself, but usually the classical way to play this is just simply bishop e7. A poison pawn variation is where you play queen b6, and you take this pawn. But anyway, that's basically what this is. For the English attack, you have stuff like, so it starts off, right around here and as you continue moving forward you're gonna see that you know the lines become much longer and longer and the reason they're longer is because the longer the lines are the more attached they are to the main line so for example the longest one here is the pure main line of the English attack like there's no side lines no extra details nothing different about this variation everything here is basically very very main line like there's nothing different from it so everything here is a f almost a forced main line like for example g4 b5 you know g5 and then b4 everything here is sort of forced but um white could play this in many other ways but this is the most common and almost cons almost always consistently played so I just added this here. Um, yeah, so basically this is the whole English attack. And the shorter the variations are, that just means that there, the, um, there are sidelines that white plays. And here's the thing I noticed about my past repertoires is where they would not be consistent. However, these are almost all consistent. There's almost nothing here that stands out of place. Like everything here is consistent. For example, you could still see like 11 g4 b5, you could still see it in this variation where it's 11 g4 b5. Everything here is consistent unless white replies to something different. That's when it changes. So here on th move 13, white played knight e2, while here we play g t while here they play g takes f6. And we reply differently, of course. So that's how it's going to stay. It's going to be like that. And I made sure that there are a lot of consistencies here and that nothing wild happens. Poison Pawn variation, um, I will add more here because I feel like this is lacking. However, if, well, if there's anything missing here, you guys can tell me and I will gladly add it. Um, like I said, the farther you go down, the more moves there are. And the point is, when there are more moves, it means that you're more attached to the main line. So for example, right here is the full E5 main line. So I'll move 10, for example, I'll move 10, uh, white could have played many moves here, like f5, e5, you know, anything. They could have played a lot of moves here. But instead, if they choose e5, there is a very long and forced main line, which starts off like this, and eventually just ends up with, with like an end game where both sides are basically, you know, equal. That This is basically like the end of the whole variation, and... Um, 
so yeah, white will have to play very sharply here, and black will also have to play very sharply, so that this ends up in a very sharp game. And the thing I like about this forced variation is that if you see that it goes offline, like offbeat, that means there's something wrong. Like you can see that there's something really severely wrong with this variation. Um, excuse me. Yeah, so this is basically the night, the night off section. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go straight to the Close Sicilian, which a lot of people told me they have issues with. So the Close Sicilian is basically, I also added an introduction for each one. Um, the Close Sicilian often goes up as this kind of move, where <coughs> it, it basically... You know, like I said, you're far more likely to come across a close Sicilian than you are with a night off. Because a lot of players, especially in tournament play, they don't want to go into like this crazy, crazy theory. Like they just don't want to do it. Because what happens then is you have like this really, you know, if if you know theory and they don't, you're going to win. But that's, that's why they go into like close Sicilians because... In a close Sicilian, they don't really have that much theory. They just simply play based on their position. So, but I added here many, many different lines that you will see and many different variations. So you'd have some kind of idea of how to go against it. Um, for the Grand Prix attack, I also added many things here. So a lot of people have an issue with um, F4, for example. So right here, I think, let's say, this is, this is the traditional Grand Prix attack. The traditional ones often go up as an instant f4 on like move two and the refutation to that is actually d5 um there's no other move except d5 for this position because this is actually the refutation and it has been seen before um however that's why people who play the grand prix attack they don't play the traditional one anymore they often play this close Sicilian. Uh, type Grand Prix attack, where instead they play knight c3 and then they play f4. And to this we reply simply with um, e6. Alright, so it's basically your choice. Um, in the Close Sicilian, I did mention that I did mention um, that there's like a knight c6 here. However, this is also another w another way to play the close Sicilian. Uh, you can also play e6. I just added this for the Grand Prix attack only, so that if you see the Grand Prix attack, you'll know what to do. I mean, knight c6 and a6 are very normal, common moves, and there's almost nothing. I mean, they always transpose into the same thing. So anyway, this is basically what I put in. I also put in a slight inaccuracy here, so... Uh, this is an inaccuracy line, which a lot of people have played before. Um, let me think. I also added an Alipin and a Smith Moore Gambit. Now, a Smith Moore doesn't have that many variations in it. It only has, like, I think, six or something, or seven. Um, because there is, like, this one main line, and it just... There's always, like, developing pieces to it. There's no actually, like, specific theory to it. Um, so yeah, I just put in the basic main lines that I've seen, you know, in databases, based on what people play. Uh, for the Alpin, I have put two different sections where there's a night off to the Alpin, because in the night off, let's say you're playing something like, you know, c5, knight f3, and then you play d6, and you're expecting something like, you know, d4, and then you, you know, take, take, and then knight f6, whatever, you go into the knight off variation. Here, they play, let's say, c3. And the Alpin isn't super popular, but it's it's pretty... I've seen this in a lot of tournaments. Um, the point of this whole opening is to force a Sicilian player into playing something like Arroyo Lopez. So, like, I don't think... I think the reason that, you know, Sicilian players won't like this is because they purposely play the Sicilian... So they could avoid, like, the Spanish, the Royal Lopez, Berlin, you know, they want to avoid this stuff. So they purposely play C5. However, this is, a, like, a, 
Um, this is like a sidestepping move, and it basically, you know, says to Black, well, I'm going to go ahead and play like a Roy Lopez, because they really want to play, you know, D4, and they really want to have two, like, two bishops over here, and they want to attack your king like that. So I did put in this kind of variation. Um, now, the reason they play C3 after you play D6 is because they want you to play like this Benoni structure, and it goes pretty well against you know they white goes really well against this so I just put in some lines so that um, the black player would not struggle um, with the alapin because I have seen in tournaments people play this and then they really just collapse under pressure so after the night off the alapin variations I went into a normal alapin variation which is just simply instantly before you're waiting for d6 they simply play c3 instantly um, and there's a lot of explanations for each move I have put in a lot of work into this. Um, yeah, this is basically all it is. Let's take a look. Um, there's also... Yeah, that's it. I mean, I will in the future add more levels to this repertoire because I really actually want to work on this. The reason is because some players, they don't want to play like a net off because it involves too, mu too much theory. Or maybe some players just want to play something like a con, maybe, or like something like a, I don't know, like some kind of Moscow variation. I really don't know. But if you leave in the feedback what you want, and if, I don't know, if you get enough upvotes up or agreement, I would definitely consider um, taking my time out to add a separate level. Um, you know, just for players' knowledges, even if it doesn't go with a night off or anything here. doesn't matter. I'll be happy to add it. Um, for now, these are like the basic uh, seven sublevels, and I hope that you enjoy them. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you um, want to suggest to me, please leave it in the comments of uh, Chessable. Um, I'm not going to really check my YouTube, so if you leave it on Chessable, I'm probably going to read it and look it over. So if you have any issues with any kind of, you know, mistakes here, inaccuracy, something wrong, you know, I'm, I'm human, so there's always going to be something up here. Um, just leave it in the comments section or leave some feedback, and I will definitely look into it. All right. Thank you. Bye.